So our next location is going to be St. Mary's Episcopal Cathedral on Palmerston Place. Where there are some beautifully dramatic light and dark spaces. And I'm going to guide people in working with sepia ink or nut brown ink and wash. And we'll use that to develop some tonal images, which would be very fitting for some of these dramatic spaces. I'm going to do a demonstration in a moment of that technique. So now that I'm not in the cathedral, I can uh, speak a little bit more clearly, don't have to whisper. You may be wondering why there is such a plethora of ink and wash studies. It's a sad story. I had a problem with recording. So this is uh, take two of my demonstration video. I'm going to be working uh, with ink lines applied with a sharpened stick. And I'm going to be using some nut brown ink. I'm going to draw some lines and then I'm going to let it dry and then add some wash uh, in, in the form of some blocks of tone. So um, here we go again. So the sharpened stick is a nice kind of liberating way to um, apply ink lines. So as I showed you briefly at the beginning when I was in, in the cathedral, uh, it's a very spectacular, dramatic interior, uh, dark spaces and also um, you know, beautiful windows, light coming through, archways and so on. So I'm planning that we can set up somewhere perhaps at the back of the cathedral at the, uh, the back of the cathedral where it's a little bit quieter and I will have some pots of as I say nut brown ink it's curious actually it seems to come out with a slightly purple um, colour and I will maybe get you to start with this approach and that is to work purely in line Ink, of course, can't be rubbed out very easily. And so, again, that's a, a kind of liberating factor. You will just go with the flow of this lovely fluid dark medium. There will be interesting challenges to do with architecture. But if I get you to work in this way uh, with drawing out some lines, we'll let it dry and then apply tone with the wash. And I'm hopeful that as well as being a very satisfying experience, uh, it will also be a good way into working in the following week in the studio with a limited palette. So making an oil sketch either with a Zorn palette or with... Um, a combination, for example, of um, burnt umber or cadmium orange and ultramarine. Anyway, working with um, working from these monochrome sketches um, into colour, so turning tone uh, into colour. So that's that's where we're heading. But that's probably an, enough uh, sufficient lines, I think, for me to put this on the heater and let them dry. So it's just taken a couple of minutes for the ink line to dry. Um, in St. Mary's Cathedral, it, you can either just wait or I might recommend you work on two drawings at once. So one is drying while you're 
doing the other. And then I'm going to apply some wash. I'm going to give you a sharpened bit of sponge, some wash, which is the same ink which has been diluted. And the usual advice of looking with your eyes half closed and then blocking in the dark, the dark shapes um, which you see. And it, it's a single strength wash and this is this is the, the point, really, that you, when you look with your eyes half closed, you'll just have to decide whether what you're describing is either light or dark. And that produces a wonderful um, kind of clarity of vision, a great simplification. There are possibilities with these bits of sponge, I mean, for this sculpture i mean it's against the light so a lot of it is dark but i can use the there's almost a sort of brush mark that i can create if i um catch this the, the broken tips of this piece of sponge and then i've got some pillars so the single strength wash yes it means things are either light or dark but you'll probably find that you can suggest some in between effects, maybe using the point of the sponge. And when it's all dry, there is also a possibility of working with charcoal or chalk to make one or two refinements. So that's one way of uh, tackling this medium. Lines down first, let it dry, put on, wash, and I'll maybe demonstrate adding a few marks to the dry wash as well. But next I want to try a different approach. So an interesting variation on the medium is to start with the wash. So, you know, it's like starting a drawing without any lines. I look at my reference material with my eyes half closed and I can see the dark shapes. There are certain places in my photograph, because that's what I'm working from, which are fairly clear. I know what's dark and what's light. Uh, other things are less clear. And so this approach feels a little bit like a, an act of faith, putting down some tonal shapes, but not being absolutely sure um, whether, I, whether I've made the right decision. But all of that adds up to, in a way, a much more exciting process because I, I'm having to be a little bit approximate. And when I try and bring some of these tonal shapes together using the stick, and some lines, uh, I'm more than likely going to find that some things aren't in the right place and will need to be, you could say, corrected or redefined with a different uh, placing of the line. And the combination of that, those loose tonal shapes and some defining lines is often much more interesting than getting everything in the right place first time. So starting with a loose pattern uh, of, of tone using the wash and then adding the line second, uh, as I've said, there, there may not be an exact correspondence between the line and the tone. And if I introduce these lines and do it in such a way that if I think something should be different, then I'll you know, effectively correct some of those lines or those edges. Then this combination of loose tone and a more precise line, I've said it'll be more interesting than if everything were placed exactly from the start. It'll also be probably much more economical 
because there are places in which I will realize I don't need to add definition, I don't need to explain parts of the drawing because the combination of the, the tonal shapes, the wash and the, 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 the bare white paper will do enough of the work. I don't know, for example, those windows there, maybe I don't need to define them any further. And so if the work that I've done using the wash and the sponge give enough of a description or an explanation of parts of my subject, then I'll do less and I'll let the looser tonal shapes do the explaining. So what often happens if you start with the wash rather than with the line is that you find that your drawing is more economical and therefore is often stronger because you've effectively edited, you've left out um, you know, superfluous detail and you've been able to make more of an emphasis of those aspects of the subject that you're interested in. So there we go, I'm adding some line using the stick. What I should be doing is, in a way, taking my time, standing back, looking at what's happening in the drawing so that I don't over explain. And um, yeah, looking at my subject perhaps again with, with eyes half closed so that I can see what's essential. Having said that, it looks like I'm going to do these windows. But yes, standing back is going to be essential to me not going past some of these uh, explanations. So that's probably all I want to do to that one for now because I thought it would be useful to you just to see what else can be done to as a next stage with um, both the ink and the wash dry. So both the ink lines and the wash in my first drawing are dry. So I could actually go back in and uh, develop a few more lines, drawing into those areas of wash. I don't know if I could I can strengthen some of my initial lines as well. So that would be something else to do. I've got areas here which I don't seem to have explained that much that I might now decide I would like to describe further. Uh, I could also Although I've been working with a sort of single strength wash, I could put on another layer of wash and therefore darken some of those tonal areas. Um, pick up a bit of that. Spread that out and Thirdly, if I can find it. Thirdly, I could even introduce some, uh, provided it's dry, whoop, some chalk lines. Um, don't know where to put them now because it's all wet. There we go, something I can do in there. And certainly I would be suggesting, you know, the use of chalk as a way of developing, refining, not necessarily correcting, uh, because I think once you get into too much correcting, you can be, I don't know, perhaps losing the, the benefit of this um, fluid medium, which is a little bit... Uh, a little bit what? It's a medium that allows you to be very de decisive. 
So I think if you get too much into correcting, then that represents some indecision. So there we go. That's three, three layers. Uh, in this case, it was an ink line. Then I added some wash with the sponge. And then I've come back now with both the stick and ink and also some chalk. So we'll have those materials uh, at St. Mary's Cathedral and I'm hoping to use this as an introduction to uh, painting with a, a limited palette, a, a relatively low, uh, low color, reduced color subject, uh, a more kind of tonal subject matter that we're going to get uh, in, in the, con the cathedral interior. Okay, so see you on Monday.